Hey everybody, today I'm going to be reviewing Hell or High Water. This is a movie that stars Jeff Bridges, Chris Pine, Ben Foster, and Gil Birmingham, and it is directed by David McKenzie. And I think I'm just going to get right into it because this movie is is really, really great. It manages to get everything just, just right. Everything from the character arcs to the way it's shot, and in particular the dialogue. The language is handled with kind of, it's like a combination of subtlety and, and ease mixed with a sort of surprising strength and uh, tension that kind of comes from underneath it. And I found it to be very, very refreshing because in Hollywood there are so few movies that handle dialogue intelligently anymore. But this film reminded me that there is hope out there, that there is still good writing it's just maybe more rare. This movie is a kind of contemporary western and it's about these two brothers played by Chris Pine and, and Ben Foster and they're both um, bank robbers and they go on a series of heists against these banks who are trying to foreclose on their family ranch. They want to take back what's there so they can cling to whatever future they may have for their family and for themselves um, as these kind of these really old Texan towns are just wasting away. They're practically ghost towns and yeah this film does take place in Texas. It's important to mention. And then on the flip side you've got a ranger played by Jeff Bridges and his partner who is of Indian and Mexican heritage and that's played by uh, Gil Birmingham and these two are in hot pursuit of these two criminals. This movie is very much a traditional cat and mouse chase kind of a movie but I think there is, you know, as I said before, there's such intelligence in the way that the characters and the scenes are composed and, and the attention to detail is extraordinary. Everything feels extremely gritty and grimy and just very authentic. It, it feels so real. I, I kind of look at these old rundown towns and I, I can relate to them because I'm a Texas native. There's a richness and a texture to this film that you don't get very often. Every single character in the background has a, a personality to them. It's almost like a, a Cormac McCarthy novel or, or like watching No Country for Old Men. I think there's similarities in terms of the look of it. And in terms of just the movie, the way it's structured, you know, I always look at like traditional scene structures in whether you're writing a script or you're writing a novel, whatever it is. And you know, there has to be in a scene, there's got to be that setup and that payoff. You have to gain something by the end of the scene, usually um, in order for it to be able to flow into the next scene so that the film is constantly progressing. But so often when I watch movies, and I think the reason for this is because, I don't know, for some reason, films, it's hard to capture that ambiguity. Like, you know, when you listen to music, it's just one sense. It's only your ears that are hearing it. So you can, you know, your imagination can play with the rest. So it is very ambiguous. But with film, because it's playing to so many senses, you know, sight and, and hearing and all that, um, it's harder to create that ambiguity. So when I watch a lot of movies nowadays, you can see all the techniques and devices that go in to creating a scene and they're not well hidden. They're always on the surface and they're spoon feeding everyone the answers. And this movie does not do that. It gets it right. It takes that normal structure and it, it builds off it. Characters and conversations in this movie are not always central to the plot. There are quirky anecdotes on the side that are often kind of humorous, but they don't detract. They don't feel contrived. And that's what I found really ingenious about it. There isn't a single character or a single line that felt unnecessary, um, that didn't have some sort of complexity to it. And I'm telling you, in our entertainment, that is very, very rare. And, um, you know, it's usually either very contrived plotting, very contrived dialogue in most of your average kind of Hollywood movies, or you have something that's very over the top, something like a Tarantino film that's meant to have very overwrought dialogue. It's, it's very conscious about that, or like a Sorkin movie. There's rarely an in-between, um, and I think that this movie really, it may not be as over the top or as maybe memorable in that sense of like a Tarantino movie or something like that, but it's it's so solid and there's really no fat to trim. I like the subtlety of it because that that's just a good film. And personally, my favorite characters and my favorite scenes were between Jeff Bridges and Gil Birmingham. The, the interactions between them are just wonderful. I mean, you've got, you know, that, that interesting dynamic of the white older man who has this bitterness and this feeling of, I guess, world weariness, you know, because his generation and the traditions that he's grown up with are just slowly decaying and he can't do anything about it, the fact that he's getting old. And so he takes out that bitterness on his partner, Gil Birmingham, who is, you know, as I said before, kind of, you know, Mexican and Indian descent. So he uses that against him. A lot of racist jokes that 
are very hurtful to him. And I think Jeff Bridges cares about his partner. I mean, in the movie, at least, they don't give any indication that he has a lot of friends. In fact, Birmingham may be his only friend in the film, who knows? But it's those masculine social conventions that he's grown up with that keep him from showing any sort of compassion. And, you know, rather than show compassion, he channels that into belittling him. You know, that's very average, and that's that's something you see a lot from, you know, the South and especially the older generation. And it's interesting to see the way those dynamics play out, not just in those characters, but others as well. But Birmingham, on the flip side, has his own bitterness towards the Jeff Bridges character, not only because he's angry with the way he treats him, but also because, you know, obviously his people, you know, years and years and years ago were run out by the white men. And so it goes both ways. They both have their reasons for being cynical towards the other person. There's a lot of emblems, like Indian symbolism in this film, which does give that sense of maybe a little bit of guilt, but more, I would say, the, the divide and the tensions that brew. And that's maybe one of my favorite points in the film. You know, this is, as I said, more of a contemporary Western. So it blurs those lines on the moral compass rather than painting that black and white picture of like, white man is the protagonist hero, and then you've got the Indians as the, the foes. You know, we've seen that time and time again, particularly in older Hollywood movies. And this one, again, it just makes it more complex. And it's that moral ambiguity that I think opens opens the film up to so many questions and it allows you to really ponder the motivations of these characters and I think all of that comes to fruition in the final scene. I'm not going to give it away, obviously I'm not going to go into detail about what happens, but it's a fascinating scene and it just shows how many gray areas there are that, I mean, who, what, like, what is truly evil and what is truly good? I think, you know, most people are a mix of the two. Even though a lot of the characters do immoral things in this film, they have their reasons for doing what they do. And I, you know, that, as I, I've used this quote many times, but like Rules of the Game, 1939, a brilliant film. That's one of my favorite quotes. Everyone has their reasons. And I love that they're able to capture those facets. I feel like that scene could have been so overwrought. It could have been one of those very expository scenes that lays out all the metaphors and explains the intent of the film, but it doesn't. And I really don't have any complaints about this film. I, I thought it was really stellar definitely go see it. It's entertaining and it's also extremely thoughtful. And that's my review. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, the link is below. And you can also like my Facebook page and the link below that. Catch you next time.